Hey, I'm the Catholic Neighbor, and welcome back to FM23 Youth Factory. This is episode 46. Might be the last episode before we transition to FM24 Youth Factory, which would be episode one for that, but it is the continuation right from here. So just be aware of that. Um, there might be another episode or two. I have to see. It looks like we've got an early, right at the end of the first minute, called penalty second minute for Penrice to step up who is in his first match back from injury and he has gone all of 90 seconds to get on the scoreboard we've been missing our best player for a significant chunk of time this season and we finally got him back and he's already got us on the board amazingly only 0.79 for the xg Weird that it didn't calculate it as a point eight, as penalties always seem to do that, but uh, with Thornhill hitting the ball off the woodwork, he only got a point oh five for that, but there is Lanahan Penrees with a brace here in the 23rd minute, and we are taking control of this match early on. This match, by the way, FA Trophy, fifth round, this is one step before the quarterfinals. That's how close we are to the FA Trophy. Also important note for this FA Trophy is the fifth tier is as high as it goes but those teams in the fifth tier there's hardly a fifth tier team left which means we're looking at sixth and seventh tier almost exclusively for the 16 teams that remain in this competition we'll see what the final eight look like when we get into those quarterfinals and what emerges but I want to say that there was only two or maybe three fifth tier teams even remaining in this round so we we could be looking at an all or mostly all fifth tier uh sixth tier and below as we head into the final stage sumahoro tries to make it three but he pushes that just wide keeper watches it comfortably go past the net but we're already well above one on the xg and we've played half an hour and we are absolutely all over them uh one key change to the lineup today as at this point, this is, you know, a chance for some silverware. So we're definitely going for it. Sumahoro, similar situation to last time. But this time, the defender about one step further up than he was the previous time. And this time, he's able to get the block on and send it out for a corner. But six shots. Six shots already. Thornhill, another free kick. No woodwork this time. He gets the bend, but he doesn't get the drop necessary on it as he puts it up and over the wall and can't get the dip and we go to halftime comfortably up 2-0 they haven't even had a shot we have 70 percent possession oh bad giveaway there uh the one change in the lineup is we have the suspension for mortland uh the sixth minute red card that he picked up if you remember from the last episode uh that saw us oof, that was close saw us draw uh Sumahoro might get subbed out here real soon. He is struggling yet again. And he's had multiple ch chances today. He just cannot get a shot on target. He's not the most accurate. He's only got an 11, but that should be enough for our level. Richards was off, looked offside. No flag being raised here. And they're going to claw one back. I thought for sure he was... Yeah. Oh, he is well offside. Well before that ball is kicked. He's already started his run. No idea how that doesn't get called. That is a terrible, terrible call. Yeah, he, he's already a yard and a half, two yards offside uh, when that ball is played. Well, well offside. Uh, let's go ahead and sub Sumohoro now, who's, again, struggling. But I'm ticked off here because we have absolutely dominated. They hadn't even had a shot. And... Uh, they finally get one because they're yards offside and it's going to stand and all of a sudden like i'm jumping at the bit here going wait 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 a second wait a second two game suspension for mortland that became a four game suspension for mortland i mean that's that's rough that is really rough plus you know he missed 84 minutes of the game he was in so ultimately a five game suspension that is as bad as they come, Davidson gets a close range attempt there and gets it on target. Uh, it didn't have no power on it, but it was right at the keeper. 
Red Nap finds the space. Peels it back, finds Kitching. That's final whistle, though. I didn't realize that we were in stoppage time even at all. I didn't realize we were past the 80th minute yet. We went from one highlight to stoppage time, final whistle. They only had two shots <laughs> on target, and one of those was offside by a flipping mile, yard and a half. Um, not quite a mile. Might be a little exaggeration. But Penn Reese comes back in style and grabs a brace, and it was enough. The comfortable game got a little less comfortable in the final minutes, but uh, final half hour, really. But you can see how we shut him down in the final 10-15. That's, that's where all those highlights just disappeared to, is this was the stretch we were watching, them battling back after getting that goal, and then uh, and all of a sudden it was over. Quarterfinal draw. We've got three teams left from the National League, and at least one of them will make the semis. Dagenham and Redbridge, Carlisle United are all... Uh, or facing each other in the quarter, so one of them will make the semis. Then Leighton Orient FC United in another quarter. Is the semifinals already set? It might be. There was no draw here for this round, so uh, we could be looking at already the later stages all being set for this tournament. Who we have? Macclesfield on the road. They are in the north, so they're same tier as we are. Macclesfield is currently fourth. 59 points for them. Six points better off than we are on the same number played. So they are having a slightly better season, and we're going to be on the road. It's going to be a big ask to, to get that win. We've, we've made it all the way to the quarters. We've already made it to the board's objective, and now then some. But this is going to be a, a tough one. It's going to be a tough one. And the fact that all three, as I said, I thought there was two or three. I, I, I believed I saw three. For all of them to have moved on to the quarters is a little worrying that it's, you know, it's, it's going to be challenging. But with any luck, with any luck, the translation of this is we won't see a National League team until the final. That we, if winning against Macclesfield will get the winner of Kidderminster and Bogner Regis who play a division down. So Kidderminster would be the likely opponent for the semis. But like Macclesfield, they're, they're right at the top. 67 points for them. Wow, look at that. Top three teams. Oldham, Athletic, Kidderminster, and South Shields. 66 points plus. We only have one team plus 66. Gloucester's at 65, but you know, Still, you get the point. We're into March. Let's check on the progress of the team for the season and then how we're doing in the standings as we've gone forward one full month already. First off, looking at the U18s and working our way up. Sam Julian, the 16-year-old goalkeeper who came in last year's intake. Intake coming soon. It's March. Already at 83 current ability and plenty of potential. Now, he's not Bercielli level, but with Bercielli leaving here at the end of the season... He's on that loan back. That means Sam Julian is our guy for next year, and he's getting plenty of growth and development pretty rapidly uh, down at this level. I think he started 60-something. He's now an 83. So if we can get him somewhere near a 90 by the end of the season, he'll be just fine Take it over next year, especially when you put him into the senior squad. He could be 100-plus very soon. Might not last very long. As our starting goalkeeper, though, as he's going to get a ton of attention. He's already, already was getting a lot of attention in January. Culver and McNally are now 60-plus. Govin is 59. A couple other players are getting fairly close, so there are a number of U18 players that are on that verge of 60-plus territory, which was unheard of to us uh, even just a year ago, where we couldn't get any U18s above a 50. Just a single player has played... For the senior team this season, though, that's Brandon Forbes with one appearance. Had a 6.5 rating in that appearance. For the U21s, a little bit more of a drop-off, but we are starting to see a, a little bit of a top end, at least, emerge out of this group. There are some guys that are developing well, playing at the U21s level. Finally. <laughs> really, finally. Now, the bottom end, 
forgettable. I mean, there, there's a number of guys here that still are not a 35 plus, all of which just they need to go. Like those seven guys, when we have this next intake, those seven guys are going to probably be released right away. Right away. Um, 35 plus could probably keep you on the squad a little bit longer. We are getting a minimum of 35 plus last two seasons now. So those guys are all on the older side. 18, 19, 20, 21 years old now. 22 from Milden Hall. But the 40 pluses, they're the ones that are starting to see the development getting majority of the playing time and will be the ones sticking around a bit longer. 50 plus, there's only a couple guys. But there are three players at the top that have seen quality development this season. Healy is now 62, but he's nearly at his max, so could at least be a backup for us. Uh, Primus, 66, also nearing his potential. And Marmon Ings, doing a little bit better, 71, could absolutely contribute in a pinch. In fact, really all three of them. Uh, are now capable of contributing. Speaking of, all three of them have contributed to senior games this season. One, two, and one bench appearance for those guys. And then Tom Evans, that's the one we sent down. That That's the one who was our backup center back for ages and was so bad that I've dropped him down. Current ability has remained exactly the same since getting dropped down. We'll see if he starts to wake up make some improvement at some point finds his way back into the squad because he certainly has potential he's only 19 it's just no determination not the development kind of guy 6.3 rating in his two appearances at the senior level and that's why i bumped him down meanwhile his replacement mark walker has already grown from a 55 ish to a 62 since coming up one start five appearances off the bench 6.9 rating significantly better we do have a few weaker souls. Greg, for one, cannot stand Greg, but I just lack other backups. We have our U18 guy, but he's developing. Julian is developing, and it's going to be taken over for Brigielli next season. So uh, I need to kind of look at what my options are because I hate Greg. I really hate him. He doesn't train well. He doesn't develop, and he's a bit of an a-hole. Duncan has developed slightly. Arthur finally has reached a 60 overall since getting called up last year. He was the regular starter until Thornhill learned the position. He was a 56. This year he started as a 59. He's finally a 60 overall. Development very, very slow. Not too far from his potential, but should be growing at least a little bit. Walker certainly is. Uh, Kasungo Matumbo at a 74. And Wilkinson, one point away from an 80. And then the whole rest of the team is 80 plus, which it wasn't that long ago that we started a year with one player who was an 80 plus and nobody else was on the entire roster. So we are definitely a better team than we were. That was two years ago, right? I believe McFadden's now an 83 slow climb for him. He was 70 pretty much all along, but climb nonetheless. Kamara doing pretty well, but he's got limited potential. Webb coming along but since swapping out and becoming the bench guy uh developing a little slower now but davidson's certainly coming along he was a 70 now he's an 85 uh, red nap slow gains to an 86 thornhill solid gains i mean he was a 70 or a high 60s since taking that starter's role he's a 91 and he's started 39 matches he's staying healthy his XG is a 6, though he only has 4 goals, 9 assists, a rating right about a 7. He's serviceable. He's doing all right. We've had more creative players in the role, but he's definitely adapted well to to the position. Atkins is good. Mortland is good. Hassel has really come along and, and taken off since uh, taking the starting role last year. Atakunle, now a 100 and one of 5 players on the roster that are a 100 or better. Of course, we're about to lose two of those at the end of the season, but we still have them for the rest of this year. Kitching, a 103. He is really, really taken off. He, he's gone from the reserve guy at the bottom of the list, down where, like, Wilkinson is, to he's about to be our second best player. Uh, Sumohoro, Bertielli continue to grow and develop as they are heading out here at the end of the season. Sumohoro has done so much better now that the morale is fixed. Seven goals in six matches since the deal concluded. 
uh, at the end of the transfer window. He had a tra- uh, he had a last five rating of a six point five. His last five is now a seven point four. His last six is a seven point two two. Lanahan Pedres has been great since returning from injury, and that's been another key. The performance of those two guys who had attitude until the deals were done, plus the return of Lanahan Pedres has has really turned things around for us, and we are doing so much better of late. Speaking of better, the month of February. So we lost to Hampton in Richmond uh, right at the beginning, and that was disappointing because we actually outplayed them in that game doesn't look great here but i mean you lose a game you score zero goals and you have multiple players with a seven rating we had the possession we had the the xg in that one but we lost at home sudbury we already saw this episode where we were comfortable until uh offside goal gave them a chance but then it's been almost all us in the last four games two nil two two three one three one we have absolutely dominated all four games. The draw, the 2-2 draw, where they came from behind twice, uh, equalizing twice. I had Penn Reese with a 9.2 rating, Sumahoro with a 7.8 and two goals. We had a 4.5, nearly 5, about 4.6 XG in that game. They had 1.4. Over 4.5 goals to under 1.5 goals. We should have won that game by three goals. And we came away with a 2-2 draw. Had a lot of that getting FM'd this season. A lot of it. A lot of it. Right? We've we've been outplayed twice this season. We've been balanced, evenly matched a couple times this season. And our record just does not equalize what's going on. But one thing, this last five, and really, you know, just since the transfer deadline two goals a game plus in the last five our offensive woes have have ended somewhere between the return of lanahan penrice squad healthy overall but especially Sumahoro ready to bag some goals again not having the attitude of uh, somebody who wants to leave and we are making progress 13 points from the last five matches that's headed the right direction at macclesfield quarterfinal Coming up pretty soon. We got Farnborough, Weymouth in the meantime. They're a little tougher, though. Well, not Farnborough. Weymouth is a little tougher than uh, the opposition from the last four. So can we squeeze out six more points from those and keep, keep right on rolling into that Macclesfield match? Hopefully we can. Because if we're going to set ourselves up for a semifinal home match in the playoffs... We're going to have to keep on working. We're still four points behind Gosport. Gloucester, just six back now. So we're a lot closer to them than we were. That's that's good news. Yeovil's running away with the title this season. So don't expect an automatic there. But for that promotion spot, second or third is certainly possible. That's, that's my target right now is top three. Top three. We're pulling a gap on Weymouth, on Lewes. We're now 11 points above playoffs drop uh we're eight points above weymouth starting to pull away from those guys bromley has stayed right behind us but we've played one more match than those around us so we do have to keep that in mind we've already kind of squeezed out three more points compared to where we were just briefly in the league sumahoro after a really good start went ice cold but he's heating up again and he now is equal for the top of the golden boot race uh, my favorite Elkin Baggett is here. Yeah, can we can we make some deals? Can I sign some guys? Can we not have a hundred year transfer ban? He's a good one. I know he's a good one. Usually you can get him at lower levels. Anyway, Atakunle is also equal top for most assists in the league. Bertielli has the most shutouts in the league, plus four over anybody else. Uh, we are definitely showing up in some good ways, but. We've lacked that consistency, and we've been FM'd so many times where we have massively outplayed our opponents and come out of it with a draw or even a loss. It was a bottom feeder that they had somebody sent off, but we we beat Farnborough 5-1. And then we went against a difficult Weymouth side who are in the playoff zone on the road who we gave up a penalty goal to fairly early on. 
and Adekunle comes away with a brace and we win 2-1. That's a big three points right there, and that's a you know massive sign because we're now seven straight without a loss, and we won six of them. Weymouth, that was, that was a 50-50 game, so we were pretty lucky to come away with. Now, a lot of that XG that they picked up, though, good point eight of it was on the penalty. So maybe we did just about outplay them if you subtract the penalty out of it. But it was fairly balanced otherwise. We exceeded our XG in both games, something we have not done in ages. We are always underneath the XG uh, for months now. Not only do we win 5-1, okay, and again, take it with that great assault on kind of the outcome here, but five goals in a game. It's the most all season. Not only is it the most all season, but we've only scored more than three, which we had done in the previous two matches, by the way. We had only scored more than three once all season long, right at the beginning of the year against Lewis. That's it. And we did that one with a man sent off in the 12th and a penalty to help us out. But we did that with a man sent off in the 12th minute. We played that whole game without a full team. We are pushing in the right direction, folks. And we need it because we're into the final two months. We are coming up right on the end of the season. We're not used to playing a tournament game still this late. This Macclesfield game is going to be a big one. And it's coming up here in just a moment. But with a couple more wins under our belt, for one, Sumohoro is now leading the Golden Boot race. Atakunle still tied on top of the assist race. And Bertielli still leading the shutout race. We're fifth and just two points away from second place. We do still have that one game played more than everybody else. So they all still have 10 to go. We only have nine to go. That is a factor. But our little plus 18 that we were at recently suddenly is a plus 28. And it's right there in the mix with those teams around us. It's better than Bromley. It's one better than Chelmsford. It's equal with Gosport. We're in this fight. 10 to play. Yeovil's already qualified for the playoffs. We are nowhere near that stage. They are having a heck of a season with eight draws and one loss. And remember, they absolutely hammered us when we played them. Gloucester, the only team to beat them, the team that's in second place. But at the rate we're going, the rate we're progressing and the team's getting better and healthy, I think there's a very, very good chance that we could make that top three. Plenty left to do. And FA Trophy still happening on the road and I've decided I'm gonna go for it we have an injury uh, we have a little bit of a selection headache Webb coming back from injury available but only on the bench definitely not um, looking like he could play more than 20 to 30 minutes and then on top of that we're also missing uh, Mortland still coming back from his injury so that's two guys missing Kitching is the flexible one that can play either position. But with both of those guys missing, I had to make a choice. Oh no, we give up a big one and it was with that choice. It was with that choice. Walker bodies the guy, but gets beat by the guy. I pushed Kitching up. I wanted to go more offensive. Uh, that wasn't really all on Walker. That wasn't really all on Walker. Atkins should have already played that ball away. That ball allowed to bounce first shot of the game and we trail. So it's Walker who's in because I wanted to go more offensive. I, I pushed Kitching up, brought Walker in. It was that or Duncan in the midfield and I wanted to control the midfield a little bit more. Go big or go home in the situation. You know, we're already in the quarterfinal. <laughs> Kitching gives that one away. Things seem to be settling down maybe a little, but the possession certainly is not. We have barely touched the ball here. This is very much out of the norm. Percioli looked like he was being held. It's hard to tell. I'm just grasping at straws here. Oh, no. He's just off the ground and slow to get up, slow to react. And McFadden can't run ahead of the life of him. We're down 2-0. Will they sit back now? No, they are not sitting back. They are still going for it. 
They're still possessing. Time to demand more. Samahoro gives that one away. We've done absolutely nothing in 25 minutes other than get beat handily and trail by two goals. They've got two guys on yellow cards already. That's one of our best opportunities right now. Sumahoro heads it on to who? No one. Lanahan Penrice, great interception. Thornhill. Lanahan Penrice, deflected. Walker intercepts. That's one thing he is good at. Headers and interceptions. Seen the stats. That's the thing he does well. That deflected off the wall. It's like the cheek, somebody's cheek or something that went off. Boy, a lot of yellow cards. Walker now has one. Close chance. Bertielli saves it. They are third and the National League North, and they are in a small pocket of teams that are absolutely dominating, along with Yeovil from our division. So there's about four really, really strong teams that seem to be above our level. They, they do seem to be above our level. I mean, we've got a pretty good team, but those four that are dominating definitely seem to be the better teams because we are we, we are not doing well here at all um, it's chance after chance after chance they're looking like we look in most games they've only had 0.63 in xg though so for us to be down by two goals that hurts but they are absolutely dominating not one player is coping with this situation well at all 37 percent possession is all Full team motivated for the second half. We're going to continue to attack. Uh, Walker and Hassel are both on yellow cards right, right now. This game, well, right now it's coming down to quality, and they've got the quality. They've got the bigger, better quality. There are a number of professional teams at this level. The next level above us is like 98% professional or 100% professional, something something like that. Uh, Thornhill, oh, he's offside anyway. Just half a step, so close. He nearly timed that right. That was our, f no, we've still only had one shot. Uh, let's sub out, bring Webb in. That'll help a little bit. Atacunle is having a really bad game. Let's bring on Ksungo Matumbo. Samoro's having a bad game. We're going to bring on Davidson. We're going to make all three subs right now. McFadden switches in a really poor manner. Felt the pressure and just gave it away. Looking highly unlikely now. Lanahan Penrice in the box. Thornhill, that's blocked. That was head, headed for the bottom corner. Should have cut that gap in half, but... Hassel, good clearance. Good control. Long ball for Davidson, but too long. Now their long ball for Higgins. He was definitely behind, and now it's three. It's over. We are out of the FA Trophy in the quarterfinals. There are, without a doubt, four teams that are much better than us at our level. It hasn't all been a matter of us underperforming this season. We are facing much better quality in this sixth tier than what we had faced previously. And our position's starting to look just about justified. I still think we can climb to that top two or three though. Thornhill loses that one. That's it. Full time. We got outplayed. But here's the thing. Look at the stats. 1.3 XG is all they had. That's it. That's it. 1.3. We fought back. We clawed back. We got to 46% possession, which means we had more than half of it in the second half. But not enough to get the balance over the course of the game. The passes completed was only 82%. We never trail in that department. Tackles won. They had 100%. We won 70%. Headers won 44%. We never, never trail in these. They had three early yellow cards and then just shut it down. Game just petered out late besides the uh, that 
last goal that they got. Uh, we only had one chance, really, in the second half. Didn't make it count. Deserved result, but probably should have only lost by maybe two. We do have Yeovil on the schedule just before the end of the season, but surrounding that, we've got some winnable games. A lot of winnable games. In fact, Gloucester and Yeovil, and then four very winnable games. So we should be taking 12 points in April. Chelmsford's going to be tough, though. Ramsgate's winnable. Hazen Yetting is, is winnable. So we've got three difficult games down the stretch. If we can get something from any of those three, but then if we take care of business on all the rest, we should be in a strong position for a semifinal berth. That, that's the goal, is to get that home match, get that first round quarterfinal bye in those playoffs. Makes a huge difference. Huge, huge difference. That's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm the Cathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.